Hey, what's up motivators? Taryn here. With so many fitness gurus out there talking about different methods of training, it leads to a lot of confusion with beginner endurance athletes. Do you focus on sweet spot training or maffetone method training or hit training or a low carb method of training or a high carb method of training? I think it becomes so much noise that it creates a lot of confusion with what do athletes actually do? Today, I wanna to touch on one of those methods of training being the primal endurance method of training pioneered by Mark Sisson. Now the Primal Blueprint has been around. It's actually one of the first books that I ever read that got me on my fitness journey that contributed to me losing 65 total pounds and becoming an endurance athlete. So I think there are a lot of good nuggets, but let's start analyzing the primal endurance method of training to see where we can possibly take some of the great aspects of it and improve upon it. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system, a system that's meant for us amateurs who wanna be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I wanna share some of the tips from it today. So let's show you a sample training week here. This is from the Primal Endurance book and full credit to them. I will put an affiliate link in the description below. Highly recommend you go and buy this book. I think it gives a nice counterbalance to the all you have to do is suffer mentality that is out there in endurance sports where this clearly lays out that you can perform very well with a different lower intensity kind of method. So to show you an example, of what the training weeks are is they have them broken up into aerobic building training focuses and then race building training focuses. So let's go part way through the aerobic building and look at a fairly typical week here, this week six. So what they've got is a rest on day one, a 90 minute swim on day two, 45 minute swim on day three, a 45 minute run later in the day, 20 minute swim on day four, two hour run later in the day. Day five is a 20 minute swim, then a 45 minute run later in the day. And day six is a one hour bike followed by a 20 minute math test, which is just running at the top of your zone two for the 20 minutes, seeing how far you can go. And then a one hour, 30 minute run. What you're going to see is there isn't a whole lot of structure to this. What they recommend is that during the endurance building period, all you do is low intensity and they recommend using the Maffetone method of training, which we'll discuss. And they just say, do that over and over and over. Low intensity, only low intensity, that's all you do. And then you can go forward into some of their more intense focused weeks, like the competition focused weeks. So let's look here at week four. Again, day one is a rest. Day two is a 45 minute swim, bike, with 45 minutes of low intensity at math. Day three is a one hour bike. And then day four, there is one intense day throughout the week where you are doing five times four minutes with 40 seconds rest. And then a 20 minute swim and a 20 minute run on day five, a one hour bike on day six, and then a rest on the seventh day. So there's only five total days of work here only one day with a total of 20 minutes of intensity throughout the entire week and five hours and 10 minutes. Now to say this is good or bad, we need some context here. So what I've created here is a bit of a spectrum where on the one end, there is focusing strictly on performance. On the other end, there's focusing strictly on health. I think where the primal blueprint really comes in is it's focusing really just primarily on health on balance, on let's just keep people exercising, where performance tends to be ignored. There are some good methods in here that we'll talk about, but historically it is completely against the alternative method that is much more traditional in endurance sports, which is focusing strictly on performance. You just give up one or the other. You can go strictly for performance and then face it, you've got to sacrifice a little bit of health. Your hormones get beat up a little bit. You start getting aches and pains that build up. Your stress levels go up. It opens the door for short-term injuries and possibly long-term injuries as well as short or long-term illnesses. Now it's not to say that either method is wrong. It's just that you have to understand what you're getting into 
into when you are choosing one method over the other. Now, personally, where I see most people following isn't actually on the ends of the spectrum, tends to be more aligned with like just focusing a little bit extra on performance, but we all really get into endurance sports to enhance our health and see if we can challenge ourselves. What I also see is that if people back off of a strict focus on performance and they get a little bit closer over there, they actually inadvertently get the performance because their body is a little bit healthier. This is particularly the case with age group endurance athletes who might be tipping a little bit into out of balance and overtraining and getting into a stage where they can't even absorb the training that they're doing, so they're working hard and spinning their wheels. If you've ever felt like, wow, I'm just working so hard here, but I'm not seeing drop dead times, this is because people tend to push more towards performance and their body just can't handle that total load. So based on those sample training weeks where I look at primal lying is actually here where the focus is very effective at creating good health, but it's packaged up a little bit as, hey, you don't have to do much and you're going to perform extremely well. So I think this is why we haven't seen this huge explosion of people using the primal endurance method because they're coming in expecting excellent performance and they're getting good health, great, but I think the balance is really right here in the middle where we're looking at performance and health and then inadvertently you also get performance. Now here's where I would keep things from the primal endurance method and I would change things from the primal endurance method. So the first thing that I would change from the primal endurance method is that the primal method, it is very big on the Maffetone method of calculating your low intensity training zone. I don't mind the Maffetone method, but I think a more accurate method is the Carnivan method. What I found is about 20 to 30% of the people that use the Maffetone method, their heart rate and their physiology was either way too high or way too low and the Maffetone method wasn't really accurate. The Carvinin method actually takes your unique physiology into account, so I find that it works for more people. There will be a link in the description below to a free calculator where all you have to put in is your maximum heart rate, your lowest resting heart rate, and then with the Carvinin method, you'll be able to calculate your actual training zones. The second thing that I would tweak is the primal endurance method talks about the black hole of training, the gray zone of training, otherwise known as sweet spot training, now, what they're saying is you really spend no time in moderate intensity. It's all absolute sprinting or very low intensity. I think that this sets athletes up for failure because they don't ever develop that moderate race type intensity that is more VO2 max focused, tempo focused. I believe more in a pyramidal model of training where the base, the bulk of your training is in the low intensity training zone, about 75 to 80%. And then the tip of the pyramid is rounded off by moderate intensity training so you can build comfort at race effort and then very high intensity training so you can build that top end speed. Studies show that this this is just as healthy and just as effective at creating the metrics required for good race performances while getting athletes much more comfortable with their actual race pace. Next, the Primal Method only recommends four weeks at maximum of high intensity training. I really just don't think that this is appropriate for somebody who needs to build a lot of VO2 max to be comfortable going and racing at a fast pace for an extended period of time. You gotta be comfortable being out there for a long period of time. So we have our training plans that max out at six months for an Ironman, which is more than appropriate, but it builds up and it's not just six months or a year round of hammering. And then finally, the primal method is very big on a keto approach, really not talking at all about the downsides of a keto approach. I certainly believe that being able to be metabolically fit and burn both fat and carbs is necessary for health and performance, but keto itself is a very high stress thing on your body, keeps cortisol levels really high. Carbs are great at blunting your cortisol and stress response. So I think there is a carb appropriate approach that needs to be taken. Now, let's dive into what I would actually put into a typical training plan. So as opposed to getting into the exact workouts, what I would do just for example is these two days here, this is like Monday and Friday, this is before a weekend on 
the far right of the screen. These are the recovery days. These are the low intensity, completely low intensity days. This can be a low intensity bike, a low intensity swim, a very low intensity run. Should be short, should be focused on rejuvenating the body. You should feel guilty about how easy these were when you do these workouts. Now on the weekend, I would encourage people to go long. So this is long, low intensity, closer to race season. We're gonna build up bigger and bigger chunks of these long endurance building efforts that are at and above race pace. So you're getting comfortable at that gray zone or the black hole or whatever you wanna call it, but you're getting comfortable at race effort. You're figuring out what your race pace is. And then to really build up that intensity and that ability to go fast for a long period of time, in the middle of the week, this is when we have the intense focus. At the beginning of the year, yes, these are sprints, as Primal mentions, in the 15 to 60 second range, but then it builds up throughout the season, getting up to tempo efforts of 30 minutes. Now that 30 minutes would be called the gray zone of training or the black hole of training, but it's very important to be comfortable at race effort and not just have sprints to do your top end, but have sprints and VO2 max intervals of two to six minutes and then more tempo based intervals of eight minutes to two hours. So that you're becoming a well-rounded athlete as opposed to just being able to go really long at super slow paces or being able to go fast for 10 seconds. I need to take a minute to thank a sponsor, which is UCAN. Now, UCAN is an excellent blood sugar stable source of carbohydrates. They have what's called super starch, which functions like a carbohydrate, but it doesn't shoot your blood glucose through the roof, causing a crash after. Yes, this is very good for training, but it's also good for day-to-day -day nutrition. I really like taking the UCAN bars, the UCAN granola as a food source that gives me a good amount of carbohydrates and energy while not shooting my blood glucose through the roof, causing a hunger and energy crash later in the day. And then particularly after a workout, I like the UCAN Energy Plus Plant Protein, which is a good way to, again, get the carbohydrates in, start recovering, but also gives you a really nice source of protein. You can go to youcan.co forward slash Taryn, and if you purchase anything after going through that link, you will get a discount that's applied at checkout. Again, that is youcan.co forward slash Taryn, and purchase anything to get a 20% discount. Thanks, Youcan. And then as far as the carbs are concerned, here we have lots of carbs because to hit these very high intensities here in high intensity training, you need carbs. You need the fuel that's easy to access in your muscles to hit it very hard. On these low intensity days, this is where you can go with primarily fat burning. I'm not a big fan of fasted training, but during these two sessions here, you can eat primarily fat and protein from like eggs or nut butters. They're very, very short workouts. So just have a little something so that you can become metabolically flexible. And then these workouts over here on the weekend depend on what the purpose is. Is the purpose just to go long at a super low intensity? Well, yeah, then you can have something that is more like berries, keeping that blood glucose nice and low. You can bars, keeping the blood glucose nice and stable. But then closer to your races, where you start adding in a lot of race specific intensities, this is where you start bringing in the carbs again so that you become comfortable with your race nutrition strategy. Overall, I think the primal method isn't bad. I think the message that you have to spend much more time than you expect at a much lower intensity than you expect is good. I think the message that you don't have to train the house down year round is also good. I think sprints and strength training are very good. I think the packaging of it just needs to change a little bit because like I say, on that spectrum, I think what it's doing is giving people a training plan that is designed strictly for good health and being able to complete a race while packaging it up, indicating that while well, you're gonna have drop dead performances and I think it leads to underperformances and people not meeting their expectations. That's why our training plan uses a much more balanced approach that is balancing health and performance. And as a result, we have a lot of athletes that get surprised with getting on podiums, getting to world championship spots because they're training not quite as hard as they think they need to, but their body is able to absorb and respond to the training and then boom, they come on race day and have a drop dead performance. That's a good surprise. 
Thank you for watching Motivators. If you're looking for a training plan that incorporates these methods that is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach, but as inexpensive as doing it yourself, check out our Motive training app that covers triathlons, running races, duathlons, swim runs, and cycling events. It's a link in the description below where you can check out your customized training plan for free. Also, if you rather listen to these tips, we also publish these videos in podcast format on the Terran's Motive Method podcast, so you can check that out. And if you don't wanna do either of those things, but you found this video helpful, hit us up with a virtual high five by smashing the like button below. Later, motivators.